It's been over a decade now since Colorado cake designer Jack Phillips, a devout Christian man, was initially sued for only for refusing to custom design a cake that had a message associated with it that went against his religious convictions. This was not an anti-gay sentiment. This was nothing like that. It was simply him saying, I cannot create a cake that is intentionally being used, being made to celebrate a same-sex wedding. It goes against my convictions. And since his art, his custom work is considered speech, he said, I can't do this. I won't do this. Six years later, the United States Supreme Court ruled in his favor, albeit on narrow grounds. Uh, perhaps had they ruled uh, with a broader precedent, he would not be in court again today. Now, there was a second lawsuit put against him that I'll let him and his attorneys talk about here, his attorney talk about here in a minute. Uh, but this is the third attempt now to deplatform, to cancel, or however you want to say it, to Jack Phillips. Now, I've met Jack Phillips uh, in person, and I can attest he is a very kind man. There is not anything about him that was to harm anyone, to cause hurt, or anything like that. It gets to a point where it's no longer speculation, in my opinion, whether this is a bullying treatment or harassment. They know who Jack is. They're going after him. Here with me now is Jack Phillips and his attorney, Jake Warner. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Jack, as I've said many times, uh, it is an unfortunate pleasure to be talking to you again. Well, it's a pleasure so, to talk to you, too. Thank you. Yes. Um, so, Jack, you want to give us a quick update. What is going on this time around and what is affectionately being called Masterpiece 3? Yeah. But first of all, let me uh, make it clear that at Masterpiece Cake Shop, we serve everybody that comes in our shop. But just that sometimes people ask for cakes with messages that we can't express. And that's what happened in the first one that you talked about, Masterpiece 1, that we won at the U.S. Supreme Court. And the day that the court granted that case, an attorney here in Colorado called us and asked us to create another cake that was blue on the outside and pink on the inside. And we were told that those colors were to celebrate, to signify a uh, gender transition changing from a man to a woman. So we told this person that we would create other custom work for them or they're welcome to you know, purchase anything out of our store, out of the showcases, but that was a cake that expressed a message that we didn't want to uh, create. And so that person sued us through the uh, Colorado Civil Rights Commission. The commission subsequently uh, dismissed those charges. Now the same attorney with the same cake has sued us in a civil lawsuit, which we uh, were in court uh, two years ago in March and the court ruled against us. And so we filed an appeal and that appeals decision was just released this morning where they found me uh, guilty again. So Jake can explain. Okay, so later. this is the third masterpiece. Right. Okay, so just real quick to clarify. So this is the third lawsuit, but the second and current lawsuit is from the same attorney? Same attorney, same cake. Same That's case. correct. Okay, uh, Jake, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. Like Jack said, uh, back in 2017, on the same day the U.S. Supreme Court decided to hear Jack's first case, uh, a Denver attorney called Jack requesting a custom blue and pea cake to celebrate a gender transition. Then a few months later, the same attorney called back requesting a custom cake depicting Satan smoking marijuana. And this had been uh, years after this attorney had initially emailed Jack, calling him a bigot and a hypocrite back in 2012. This is clear harassment. Well, after all of this, the uh, attorney filed a charge uh, with the Colorado Civil Rights uh, Commission, arguing that uh, Jack violated state law. Um, and the state, uh, just three weeks after Jack won his U.S. Supreme Court decision back in 2018, the state came after him again and tried to punish him for declining to create this custom cake celebrating a gender transition. But once we uncovered uh, new evidence of the state's ongoing hostility against Jack, uh, the state abandoned its lawsuit against Jack, uh, but the uh, attorney picked it back up and filed a, a third lawsuit against Jack in, in state court. And uh, we lost at trial and then appealed that decision up. And then the Colorado Court of Appeals just today affirmed the trial court's decision, punishing Jack's decision not to express a message. And that's not right. Free speech is for everyone. The government can't force anyone to say a message that goes against their fundamental beliefs. And that's what this case is about and it's what other cases we're litigating are about, including the 303 Creative case currently before the U.S. Supreme Court. So let's talk about that real quick. Uh, do you think the 303 Creative versus L Elinus case has any uh, potential to wipe out Jack's cases? Like, is it going to answer the question for Jack's case? It certainly could and it should. 
Uh, there, we've asked the court to affirm the right of every American to say what they believe without fear of government punishment. What we've seen over the past 10 years is uh, activists and government officials misusing the law to punish people that they disagree with. And we're hoping the U.S. Supreme Court will affirm in 303 Creative that the government can't force anyone to express a message that goes against their deepest beliefs, that the First Amendment protects not only writers and filmmakers and photographers, but also cake artists and, and others who create art for a living. And it's important for me to say that this principle is important for all Americans. Uh, we don't think the government should force uh, an LGBT website designer to create custom websites criticizing same-sex marriage. So truly a win for Jack or a win for Lori Smith and 303 Creative, that's a win for all Americans. I just wonder if people don't understand how the court works, how precedent works. This is not uh, a win for Jack Phillips. This is not a win for Bakers. It's not a win for Christians. Like the precedent goes uh, well beyond that. Uh, I, I just think it, you mentioned a few of the examples, but like a lesbian photographer, for example, should not be forced to to photograph a wedding or a ceremony that takes place within uh, you know a community that is very much so one man, one woman. If she feels uncomfortable to do that, I, I feel like this should be very common sense that she should be able to say no, thank you, and be done with it. But this is this is a critical debate in our country right now. ADF represents clients. All, all across the country, up and down the East Coast, we represent photographers. We represented filmmakers in Minnesota, a calligrapher and painter here in Arizona. And uh, the issue here is, can the government force any American, no matter what you believe, can the government force any American to say something that you don't believe? So you can disagree with Jack's views on life's biggest issues yet still root for him to win this case because a win for Jack would protect uh, even those who disagree with him, the right for them to say what they believe without fear of getting punished. Yeah. Jack, this is going on year 11 now. So when I first moved to Washington, D.C. back in 2017, uh, my first court assignment, which I was not excited, I thought the Supreme Court was going to be boring, and, and now I'm, I'm just enamored with it <laughs> and have been for several years. Uh, Masterpiece One was my first case. And so I was, I was there for the oral arguments um, and, you know, was celebrating with you in the victory. But this is now, I mean, that was six years, right? That was six years into it. And now yeah. we're on year 11. What keeps you going? Oh, my faith in God, uh, my family, um, ADF, their support. There's so many things that keep us going, but also knowing that this case, like Jake was saying, is for all Americans. And if the, we lose these freedoms, they won't come back and we need to fight for them for every American. Yeah. We've seen a lot of victories at the Supreme Court over the last couple of years now. Uh, I mean, with Dobbs last year, uh, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic about the 303 creative uh, arguments as well. And so uh, Lori Smith, Jack Phillips, Baron L. Stutzman, I mean, so many, uh, I like to call you guys contemporary heroes of the faith because this is the fight. I mean, it, it starts here, it starts in the course. It starts with what's legal, what's not legal. And uh, it can only get worse from there. So I uh, really appreciate, Jack. I really appreciate you and the courage that you've shown uh, and so many others who you've inspired. I mean, I think, I mean, Jake was just talking about several cases that ADF is currently uh, litigating and, and, and the, even other uh, firms litigating other cases on similar, uh, with similar scenarios. I'm like, I think that people are seeing the example that you and some others have set. And they're like, you know what? I, too, am, am not going to, I'm not going to bend. I'm not going to bend here. Uh, earlier this morning, I was interviewing uh, Jacob Kersey, a 19-year-old police officer, which is kind of weird to say, a 19-year-old police officer who just resigned because his department gave him, gave him grief and said, you have to take down a post that he put up that simply gave a biblical interpretation of marriage. It wasn't hateful. It wasn't laced with any you know, harsh language or anything like that, um, but they came down on him. And, and he's like, I'm not, he said, I'm not taking it down. So... Um, you're setting a really good example here, Jack. And uh, Jake, the work that you and your attorneys do, I mean, the, the running joke is that I do more with ADF than I do with my own job, uh, just covering a lot of what you guys do. Um, but it, again, it's an unfortunate necessity. Uh, it, it really, really is, all right? So uh, appreciate everything you're doing. Let's talk about uh, where it can go from here. So um, the Colorado Court of Appeals, a panel for the Colorado Court of Appeals ruled against Jack this morning. And uh, so what are the next steps, Jakes? 
We have a couple of options right now. We can ask the uh, Colorado Court of Appeals panel to revisit its decision or reconsider its decision, uh, or we can ask the Colorado Supreme Court to take the appeal. Um, we're still evaluating those options uh, right now, but certainly you could see this case up at the U.S. Supreme Court in a matter of time. Um, so the Colorado Supreme Court would be next and then the U.S. Supreme Court thereafter if necessary. Yeah. Okay. The same trajectory that we saw with Masterpiece One. That's exactly um, right. So how many other cases do we have uh, brewing in the lower courts right now with ADF or an approximate amount that, that are similar to Jack's? I bet we have close to 10 cases around the country, uh, multiple photographers along the East Coast, um, and they're at various levels. We have some that are still in the trial court, and we have some that are uh, in intermediate courts of appeal. Um, the most critical case right now, of course, is 303 Creative that's pending before the U.S. Supreme Court. We're hoping that the U.S. Supreme Court will give us a big win in that case, affirming the right of all Americans to say what they believe without fear of government punishment. And if we get that win, that should protect artists everywhere here in the United States. And we're hoping that that will give uh, great protection, not only to those we're representing right now in these other cases, but also uh, for photographers, filmmakers, writers, and other speakers uh, who disagree with our clients on some of these issues. Jack, you get the last word, sir. <laughs> well, like Jake was saying, I think these, these cases are just so important for every American to be able to say what they want whether you're in the workplace or not, but especially like a creative professional like myself, my staff, uh, my friends, Baron L and uh, Lori Smith, they're standing up as well. And, and uh, it's important for everybody because if these freedoms go away, then they won't come back. So we, we do need to continue these fights. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Jack, thank you so much for your courage and your example. Jake, thank you to you and your colleagues for spearheading these, uh, these, these battles. They are unfortunate, they are sad, but they are very necessary and uh, we're very thankful for you guys. Actually, one more thing, Jack, uh, what's your website? Uh, my website is Masterpiece Cakes with an S, MasterpieceCakes.com. MasterpieceCakes.com. Uh, ADF's okay. website is ADFLegal.org. You can learn more about all the my cases and support ADF and, and all of us yeah. do that. Guys, check out Jack's shop. Check, check out his website and obviously go to ADFLegal.com. Follow them on social media. Uh, legal firms are typically boring because who wants to hear about court cases, right? But ADF has really mastered the uh, master, mastered the arts of making it fun. Their communications team is incredible. The video work they do, uh, it, they really turn what some would call boring stuff into really fantastic storytelling. So uh, check out Jack's website, check out ADF Legal and their social media. Gentlemen, thank you again so much for your time. We'll talk soon. Thanks, John. Thanks for having us.